What's up guys and welcome back to the G-Red Show, I'm G-Red. We gotta talk Real Madrid today, more specifically some of these players within Real Madrid because I've been hearing a ton of criticism lately, I've been hearing a lot on social media, a lot on other news outlets about Real Madrid players, especially their performances in the Copa and the Euros so far, that Real Madrid players are just system players. They're actually not as good as we think, and if they're on another team or if they're playing for their international team, they're significantly worse. I've been hearing all these different types of criticism, so I want to give my take on this, address this, and I do want to touch on, first and foremost, Brazil, what we saw from Vinicius and Rodrigo, and more importantly, why Vinicius and his poor performance is very concerning, especially with him kind of being the Ballon d'Or favorite right now, so we're going to touch on this, plus a little more on some of these other players that have played in the Copa Euros so far, and our thoughts on all this. <laughs> Now, being completely honest, I mean, Real Madrid is Real Madrid. They're the most successful and best club of all time. They're the most prestigious football club of all time. And I would like to say that if you're playing for Real Madrid and you play a good amount, you're a pretty damn good player. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But I will say there is something about a club, a mentality, culture, and more importantly, a coach. I don't think people really realize, and a lot of you probably do, but some might not realize how important a world-class manager is, for example, Carlo Ancelotti. If we look at Vinicius Jr. and his performance against Costa Rica for Brazil, it's a little concerning because the Ballon d'Or favorite, right, who was pretty world-class all throughout the knockout stage in pretty much every single knockout match, in the Champions League for Real Madrid this season. I would have watched that match if I had no idea who he was. I would have never been impressed. I would have never thought this person was going to win the Ballon d'Or. And I think that's what's really frustrating about the Ballon d'Or recently. I think Vinicius is more concerned about flair and beating a guy with skill and just doing skill moves at times than actually winning the match. Because when he played in the first half, I saw him try and do step overs and turns and different skill moves and ends up playing the ball backwards or sideways and not even makes an attempt to go towards the goal, get a shot on target. It was very, very frustrating. And I get it. It's just one match. It's his first match on the big stage without Neymar. He's technically, you know, the main player for them now or are going to be considered that player. But this is his third major tournament with Brazil while being at the top of world football, right? He played, this is his second Copa. He played in the World Cup, and we've yet to be really moved or impressed at all from Vinicius Jr. I would actually go as far to say that, that Rodrigo and Rafinha were actually more impactful, and probably Paqueta, uh, than Vinicius Jr. All of them had really quality shots. Rodrigo had a couple fantastic passes, one in the first half to Rafinha in particular, where he chipped over the entire Costa Rican back line. He got subbed off, what, mid-second half, and there was a reason for that. And again, this kind of can go back to coaching, too. Brazil is ranked number four in the world. I would not put him at four. I'd probably put him at six, maybe seven. But they do have a lot of class players on the pitch, but this is another criticism I have, right? Because Vinicius is naturally a left winger. Rodrigo is naturally, you know, I probably would like to say since he's right footed, he'd want to play on the left, but he plays on the right. Rafinha was in his comfortable position, but who was their number nine? Vinicius technically started up top and they kind of rotated between the three of them. They were kind of just moving all around. And when you're not playing in your comfortable position, it's like Foden playing on the left for England. He's noticeably worse. You would look at England and be like, wow, this guy is the best player in the Premier League. I don't see it. It's the same thing here. And also being coached uh, at Real Madrid by Carlo Ancelotti, playing with Luka Modric and Toni Kroos, that really makes it look like you are a little better than you are. I think at times... Other players can elevate you, being in the right culture can elevate you, and more importantly, the right manager can elevate you as well. And I'm not going to say that Vinicius is carried by Real Madrid because that's not the case at all, but I will say he's noticeably better for Real Madrid because of those reasons, whereas Brazil, they have a manager who has bounced all over the Brazilian league for his entire career. I've never even heard of him. You know, and I, I can't really say that he's a world class manager. I would say it's not a huge alarm for Brazil and the way they play, in the way that they played, and the way that Vinicius played. They had a ton of opportunities. The goal they scored that they called off. I'm not an expert. I'm not a referee, so I'm going to stay out of it. I thought it probably could have been awarded, but I understand to an extent why it wasn't. But I think it's a little concerning from Brazil. But again, like I said in my previous video, I think that they could potentially get knocked out as early as the quarterfinal. I'm not that impressed by Brazil. And the Copa America is just such a tough and rough 
style of football. These guys are honestly, they're the style of play is just a lot different than the Euros. The Euros are a lot more graceful, calm, possession based. And, and, you know, the Copa America is just back and forth at times and super fast play, counterattacking, build up football. It, it's very exciting to watch. It is a little different, which is why I feel like, you know, anything can really happen, I guess, in the Euros too. But when we look at Brazil, I, I would say I was pretty disappointed by Vinicius. Rodrigo, I think, was better. But I will say on Rodrigo too, I think because Rodrigo's on Real Madrid, he's looked at better than he is. If he's on Chelsea, if he's on Manchester United, if he's on you know, PSG, really any other club. He's like, yeah, you know, he's a quality winger. He's going to score some goals. He's fast, but he's no one that, wow, I'm so thoroughly impressed with him. If he was playing for Real Madrid, basically five to 10 years ago and plus, he would have never seen the field. That's that's kind of back where I'm at, where the talent isn't quite as consistent as it was back in the day. So I will say Rodrigo had a couple great goals, really important goals for Real Madrid this season. Obviously it was okay for Brazil, but I can't sit here and say that Rodrigo is a superstar, that he's world-class because he plays for Real Madrid. He is a good player, but I don't think he's world-class. So those are my thoughts on Brazil, Vinicius, and Rodrigo. Now looking to some of these other players, I don't think Kroos and Modric have anything to prove uh, for club or for international, and they're definitely not system players. We can see how important Tony Kroos is right now in the Euros for this team. He's won a World Cup. He's always been extremely important to Germany. Luka Modric, I don't really think we have to say anything other than he took a Croatian team with the help of a couple other good players to a World Cup final while not being a completely dominating type of team. They're not a top five team in the world. They're not a France. They're not an England, right? They're not super world class. And he helped take that team to a World Cup final, semifinal last World Cup. So those two, you can't say they're system players because they're not. Jude Bellingham... I think he was given a little more praise and hype than maybe he deserved because early on in the season for Real Madrid, he scored a pretty good amount of goals. And I was unimpressed with his performances in the knockout round. Pretty much every single knockout match for Real Madrid in the Champions League. Now for England, I will say the first match, he was basically the reason why England won. I think he was spectacular. The second match against Denmark, I can't say too much, but he's also playing under Gareth Southgate, who might be one of the worst managers in the Euros. Because that team is, on paper, a top two, three team in the entire world and should make it to at least the semifinal of the Euros. And with how they look now, you know, I can't even feel comfortable saying they're going to win their match in the round of 16. So I don't want to say that he's a system player either. And it's hard to say that any of these players are system players. But I will say some of the players, I think Chuameni, Kamavinga, Rodrigo, those three are the only three that I can probably feel comfortable saying that they are appeared to be better than they are because they're on Real Madrid. Because Camavinga is not starting for France, and when he comes on, he doesn't really do anything that special. He's just he's a good player. He hustles, and you know he'll get the job done. He's a good player. Same with Chuameni. I don't think he's world class. I think they're both good. I think Bellingham's better than both of them. I think Valverde is better than both of them. But I don't think they're anything that's like, wow, they're amazing. Real Madrid is going to win the Champions League because of them. They're just good enough where they fit into the puzzle, they're coachable, and they fit the system and culture well, which is why culture and mentality goes so far in world football because you don't have to necessarily be the best football team and have the most skill to win. Madrid has shown that on so many occasions against Man City. They didn't play the best football. They scored early, sat back. It wasn't pretty. They won. Same thing against Dortmund. They didn't play the best, but they ended up winning, right? They always find a way. And that's culture and its mentality and its experience and its coaching. That's why I do think to an extent, I understand why people are saying Real Madrid players are system players. Um, to an extent, some of them, yes. Because if you went to a different team, I don't think they would be standouts. I think they would just be solid players. But again, you can't argue against players that are winning several Champions Leagues at a young age. So I want to know what you guys think down below out of all these players playing at Real Madrid. You know, let me know what your thoughts are on them. Do you think they're system players? And I guess we'll be we looking at the Ballon d'Or too. How important is this tournament for the Copa and Euros? Do you think this will play a major factor in whoever wins? Because if Vinicius plays like he is and Brazil doesn't win the Copa, does he deserve to win the Ballon d'Or? I don't know. Kylian Mbappe, to be honest, Kylian Mbappe doesn't really impress me that much in the Euros. I know he broke his nose. He only He's only played two matches. He has one goal, a penalty kick. I got to say I'm a little unimpressed with him. I got to say I was also a little unimpressed with some of his Champions League knockout stage matches this season with PSG. It's going to be interesting. 
between Kroos, Bellingham, and Vinicius, it's it's really interesting because they all have the same amount of trophies for Real Madrid. I think whoever makes it the farthest in their respective tournaments, even Kroos could have a chance to win the Ballon d'Or because if Germany wins the Euro, there's nobody else on Germany that's going to win the Ballon d'Or. I mean, Musiala is good enough where he should have been in consideration, but they don't have any trophies for Bayern Munich, so it's really tough to say. Mbappe doesn't have Champions League to back it up for him. France looks pretty poor right now. It's just a very, very strange time. If England wins the Euro, I think it's pretty set in stone that Bellingham probably wins the Ballon d'Or. I don't know. It's just, it's a very, there's so many weird circumstances for the Ballon d'Or. So I got a little off topic about this at the end, but I want to know your thoughts about all this down below. Do you think Real Madrid players are system players or some of these players are perceived to be better than they are because they play for Real Madrid? Let me know your thoughts about that. Let me know your thoughts about the Ballon d'Or. Does Vinicius Jr., does he have to play better to win the Ballon d'Or? And if he doesn't win the Ballon d'Or, who does? Who deserves it? Who's winning the Copa? Who's winning the Euros? Let me know your thoughts down below and I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G-Red Show.